you know, and you've obviously been doing a lot in the garden with COVID, but yes. it's all stuck at yeah. home. You know, so what have you been up to in your garden? Um, so we've been working on the ponds. So that's one of our new things is that we've connected two ponds together, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, makes a bigger pond. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, science, yeah. <laughs> but um, this new pond, which is quite, what's quite good about it, is that it's a lot deeper than the other bits, which is mm. good for things like frogs, mm. because it both stays, stays cool in the summer and then also stays warmer in the winter because it's a bigger body of water. So that's really useful. And then what other stuff I've been doing? So I've been working in my grandma's garden at the moment as well, and I've just sort of landscaped a rockery area, which has been quite interesting. I've quite enjoyed doing that. And I'm going to adjust it a little bit, add a bit more grit and things. Mm -hmm. um, now I've been up to quite a bit, um, mainly um, bringing on the seedlings as well. So our smart plants have just sort of gone to the next stage now where they're just getting flowers on them, mm -hmm. which is really good. We're going to stake the cucumbers at the moment. Um, and I've been up to quite a bit, really, and you know, and enjoying it as well because you know, that's the thing with you know, with the garden, you've got to enjoy the garden as well, you know, especially at the moment when the weather's a bit nicer. Just get out and just just enjoy it and just sit in the sun and admire it and admire the work you've done. And through that, you can then see what areas you want to adjust and change. So we're probably going to take out some of the iris that have died died back a little bit and replace them, and work on the new pond start planting that out with some native pond plants, which will be really nice. Um, and yeah, and just enjoying it as well. Yeah, definitely. No, it's really important. Yeah, and people definitely. can see a lot of this stuff and follow you on, on what yes. you're up to on Twitter and on your YouTube channel and things and see what's going on. Definitely. So it's really interesting. That's how I knew about the pond. Yeah. Very, yeah, really nice to see. Um, and your little <laughs> frog blog. The frog blog, yeah. yeah. That's good. <laughs> do you grow primarily, is, is your garden primarily for, for habitat or do you grow a lot of your own fruit and vegetables and things as well? Yeah, so I'm personally more interested in the ornamental side of things, but um, we do grow a lot of our own veg, so we're not totally self-sufficient, but we've got um, taters in at the moment, uh, I don't think we've, got any, we've got some leeks growing, just planted out some purple sprite and broccoli, uh, got a couple of apple trees, which have done really well this year, actually, we've got quite a few coming on that. Uh, onions, uh, shallots, garlic, so we do grow quite a few, and then herbs, mm. things like that. Um, so it is, it's just so satisfying when you do grow something yourself and you can take it back and eat it, because you know that you've nurtured this plant, watched it grow, and now you're eating it. Mm. It's a really, really great feeling. And obviously it's good for the environment as well, because that food isn't traveling and then coming back to your house. It's just straight from the house, straight from the garden into your house. Yeah, there's much more appreciation for it as well. Yes. And it always tastes better as well, I find. Oh, definitely. If you've grown it yourself. Definitely. You know? And then it always make it to the house though. You always end up eating something yeah, on the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. We used to we used to grow a lot of um, stuff at home, but where I live at the moment here in Birmingham, we don't have a very big garden. Yeah. And we're renting, so we kind of can't do a lot, a, a great deal really. Um, and our garden's very, very small. So yes. now we've got baby on the way, so we need it to be yeah, safe, as, as safe baby as possible. Proof. Yeah, that's it, baby proof. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's it's interesting, isn't it? And I, I wanted to find out as well a bit more. Well, you said you liked ornamental, the ornamental yes. side of things. What? Type of is there a specific specific type of ornamental gardens you sort of prefer or designs you kind of mm. are drawn to? Does your garden have yeah. a bit of a theme or? Yeah, I like a naturalistic theme. So, for example, uh, do you know the designer Mr. Shihara? I can't say I do. Okay, he designs Japanese gardens. Mm. Um, he, he's quite a lot. He uh, does a lot at Chelsea, and his gardens are incredible because he, he, you know he, I always think it looks like the slice of a mountain. And it's in a very, very small area because it's the artisan garden. So it's, you know, it's not much bigger than, than this bandstand. But it's such an incredible thing that he does because it looks so natural. It doesn't mm. look like a man has touched it. It's unbelievable. It's they're just so stunning. And I love those sort of gardens where it doesn't look like a garden. It looks like a natural habitat. Mm. So our garden is on a hill. So it goes up in levels. Uh, so what my dad's done is he's... Um, cut out these levels and sections to make it flatter in certain areas. And I love the way that's done, where you've got a gradient and it's split into sections, but you create it so it kind of flows. So like the rockery at RHS Wisley, the way that comes down in stages and you can see the actual garden itself seems to progress as it comes down. You've got the slightly boggier areas at the bottom, then the rockery, and then, you know, maybe like a more of a Japanese theme at the top. It's just incredible how the garden itself, yes, yeah, seems to progress. I just think that's such an amazing thing to be able to achieve and to get it to that stage where it looks so natural and so perfect. But, you know, there's still a bit of imperfection there to make it look natural. I think that's an incredible 
it's an incredible thing to be able to do. Yeah, indeed. And a lot of, um, I've met a lot of landscape architects who sort of say, you know, some of the best landscape designs you would never know have, yes. have been designed, you know, 